Good morning, my name is Lena Shunt and I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Regional Development Australia across the towns of Northwest Queensland region, or better known as RDA for short. We're a small not-for-profit organisation that focuses on regional economic development working across the towns of Northwest Queensland region. Today we're delighted to be able to bring to you a webinar focusing on funding support for training in the construction sector. And uh, today we'll be able to introduce two of our key panellists who are real experts in this region to share information with you. Before I do that, I'd also like to recognise the Australian Government through the Department of Employ um, Education, Skills and Employment who have funded the Regional Employment Trial Program under which we're operating this Building Jobs in Northern Queensland project. It's a great delight to work with the construction sector. We welcome you today and hope you'll be able to take away some tips that will be helpful to your business going forward in the uh, future as more and more jobs turn up around our region with all the infrastructure projects that are on the books. I would like, now like to introduce the panellists. They are Lalita Wright, the Engagement Manager with Construction School, uh, Skills Queensland. Lalita also works right across northern and northwest Queensland and uh, has over 20 years of experience in the vocational education and industry sector. She has a primary focus on supporting both individuals and businesses to source the best training solutions that meet their needs. So welcome, Lalita. I'd also like to introduce uh, Tammy McCall, who's training for support for the Back to Work program within the Queensland Government. Tammy has worked in the vocational education and training sector for about 16 years in a wide variety of roles and has a wealth of knowledge from all of those different industries and training organisations that she's worked with. Over the past four years, Tammy has worked on the Back to Work program, predominantly in funding and training navigation to support businesses and also job seekers in filling skills gaps and meeting the needs of industry and supporting local employment and job outcomes and projects. So I'd now like to hand over for the presentation to the panel. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Glennis. Um, yep, thank you to Regional Development Australia for the opportunity to attend and provide some information. Um, I'll just take you through a quick overview of you who construction squints Skills Queensland is and how we can help uh, build your skills and your business. Uh, so CSQ has an industry engagement team that services all regions across Queensland and we work closely with industry to ensure that we keep you up to date with relevant information. CSQ does not deliver the training uh, but is an industry fund that subsidises training for those working in the building and construction industry. Uh, we provide access to skills and training across a range of areas including business, compliance and technical to equip you and your workforce with the skills you need now and into the future. So how do we do this? We're funded by an industry training levy. Basically whenever there's a construction project over a certain size we receive a small percentage of the cost and we use this money to subsidise your training. If you're wondering how we determine uh, which courses to subsidise, each year we consult with industry, uh, both on a local, regional level and across the state, uh, to learn what's needed. And then we produce a document that we call the annual training plan that outlines our investment. This year, our investment is around $37 million and I'll take you through later in the presentation in more detail. Um, in addition to subsidised training, uh, we also work to publish a number of reports designed to help you uh, make informed business decisions. Uh, we have regional profiles, um, snapshots on major projects, um, apprentice annual reports. Uh, but please keep in mind that a number of our reports were done pre-COVID-19, so we're still, still looking at projections and forecasts. Um, so please reach out to us if you do need any further information. Uh, we do connect with a number of registered training organisations to make sure they deliver um, the training that's needed both in the region and across the state. Now CSQ has um, three service um, pro programs, three service or key regions that are our priorities. Um, they still remain as the attract area, so that's the, finding the right new entrants, the right talent for the building construction industry. We have our develop area as well for those uh, working in the construction industry, so making sure we're providing them with training solutions and workforce planning tools as well. 
Um, and then our final one there is retain. So making sure we keep, you know, our talented, skilled people in the industry. Uh, we also provide a number of workforce health and wellbeing uh, programs as well. So there are three key priority areas. So our investment in 1920 will be the um, is currently 37.61 million dollars, which is an increase from our previous annual training plan. Uh, you'll see the attract pillar there uh, is accounted for 4.7 percent of our annual training plan budget. Developers around 58 percent, and retain around 18 percent. So you can see in that develop area, that's you know where we're seeing a majority of our demand coming through from industry. So we we invest getting quite a bit of um, funding towards. We have four course programs that I'm just going to focus um, on this morning uh, that sit within our develop area. They include our short courses. So that's your individual competencies, um, subjects. So they include things such as your work uh, white card, working at heights, elevated work platforms. Um, the newest of our programs that we've added to that list is um, your first aid and as I've mentioned, the white card course, so they're quite popular programs. Um, in our high level skills area, so this is for those that are looking at upskilling or um, further career advancement in the industry. So we offer quite a range of certificate falls through to advanced diploma programs. We also have the next one there is our skills assessment and gap training. So this is for those um, who are looking at um, having their skills recognised, years of experience but perhaps no formal qualifications. So we can assist you there with a number of different qualifications in general construction and civil construction as well. Um, and the last one there, which is one of our newest initiatives, is the small business program. So through our industry consultation uh, last year and earlier this year, uh, we um, determined you know, where we need to invest some of our, our funding towards programs that are really going to help small, business to, small businesses to grow and survive and prosper. Uh, so you can access a number of programs, including um, estimating, tendering, quoting, contract management, uh, marketing and business development, digital skills, negotiation and conflict resolution, uh, knowledge to comply with legislation, regulations and codes. Um, so yeah, please take advantage of those programs and I can certainly put you in contact with uh, contracted registered training organisations. Uh, the other program I'd like to highlight as well uh, is our Apprentice Advanced Plus program. So for those employers who uh, have apprentices um, employed with them, this is a great uh, initiative. So it assists apprentices to gain additional skills uh, in addition to their apprenticeship training plan. So it needs to sit outside of what they're learning through their apprenticeship time. And they are fully subsidised courses. So it could be, um, you know, machinery tickets or, um, you know, white card may not always, you know, appear in their, their training plan. So, so yeah, certainly take advantage. And it's an opportunity to um, further develop their skills and, and keep them within the industry as well. Um, so we do encourage there's short course programs as well as high level skill programs so that's your certificate for and above and uh, they must for the high level skills program they must have completed at least two years of their apprenticeship training but when it comes to eligibility certainly um, consult with your uh, registered training organization who will provide you with more information so just wanted to give you a bit of a snapshot as well on the number of, um, you know, the demand that we're seeing coming through for our short course programs. So that includes our top five, you can see there on the slide. So, uh, you know, we continue to push for safety courses in addition to competencies that support professional development for workers seeking licensed outcomes. In the civil space, safety continues to be the most in-demand competencies, followed by plant operation ticket courses. 
We also have our higher level skills area. So in 18, 19, over 3,000 participants um, access the subsidised higher level skills qualification through one of our CSQ's contract training providers. Uh, with the only change from the previous year being the continued growth and demand for our certificate for and hazardous areas electrical. Uh, regarding civil, CSQ uh, did see an increase in the CERT 4 supervision, particularly in regional Queensland as projects continue to move to mobilisation. Um, this quality alone making up the lion's share of enrolments in this program. And we've also seen with, within that high level skills program and with COVID-19, then there's been more of an uptake because there are a lot of online options available now um, in that, that high level skills space. How to find CSQ subsidised training. So we have a new and improved course selector. Um, and uh, two of the primary options to find the training you need or you, that you need or you just want to see what's available. Uh, so just all you need to do really is just type in what you're looking for, even if you don't know the full competency or qualification name, um, the small business or, um, or heights for example. And that will bring up a list of all relevant subsidised courses and qualification. So you just click on the one that you want. You can also filter on um, registered training organisations as well within the region. If you find it difficult at all to navigate, please you know, get in contact with myself or your local engagement manager in the region. So we do provide a number of you know, tools to help and support industry. And one of those tools is our Knowledge Centre. Um, so our Knowledge Centre um, is a great resource. It provides up-to-date and current information on our um, projects in the region. Uh, so it provides information such as uh, the, the uh, project value, the uh, timelines, and what sort of workforce requirements are on each construction site as well. Um, so it's quite an interactive site um, and yeah, if you sort of want to get a bit of an idea of what's happening in the region, please yeah, go into our Knowledge Centre um, and, and check that out. And certainly if you need any, any further details on a, a local regional level, just give us a call and we'll be able to help you with further information. Um, so that's, that's your last yeah. Slide, so yeah. that's the end of my presentation. Um, but certainly, yeah. Following my presentation, Tammy's would open to any any questions at all. Right. Yeah, some support. Thank you. So my name is Tammy um, McCullough, I'm from the Back to Work program. So um, I'm here just to talk to you today a little bit about the program that we run um, and how uh, providing some helpful links. Um, construction industry is quite unique. It does have um, Construction Skills Queensland funding to help support training, which is great. Um, however, I can also give a, a broader um, sense of all the different funding that's available. But today I thought that I would um, piggyback on what the leader was speaking about and give you some value add as the leaders covered the majority of uh, training needs for construction. I thought that I would use this time to present some helpful links that um, business could use uh, during this time. There has been quite a lot of changes happening and quite a lot of different fundings um, available. So what I thought I would do through this presentation is just run you through um, some helpful links uh, that will help you to navigate these times and help you to um, see what's available through um, government to support businesses and where you would go to find that. So I'll just go to that next slide there. So I've broken these down into a few different um, areas. So the first um, that I'm just presenting here is around where you would go um, for Australian funding, um, national funding for business. So the single point of truth there for that one is um, the Australian Treasury. So that site there will run you through um, all of the, the, the up and coming um, and you know, available um, supports for business at the moment. Obviously, um, during this stage, it's, it's, it is changing regularly. So um, it's a good 
point of truth there to head to the Australian Treasury website, which you can do through that link that we've, we've provided. Um, also, too, I've provided a link there for the Australian apprenticeship information. So there has been some extra support available for that as well. Um, and that link there will take you to um, to be able to find your local representative uh, to, in, in providing support to apprentices. Um, and then I've also put up something that I find quite handy as well is the Australian um, Grants and Programs link. So this will help you to um, navigate what grant funding or programs that are available um, nationally. Uh, and it's got a, a guide there which you can provide some information and then it will um, present to you the relevant uh, grants or programs that uh, meet the needs that you're looking for or might be relevant to you. So it helps to sort of um, narrow it down because it's quite vast. So um, it's quite a good tool, uh, I find. And then on the next slide, um, I've provided the Queensland State Funding for Business. So once again, the Queensland Treasury website I've provided there. Um, that one too, just as the Australian one, it does go through um, what's available and provided by the state um, to support businesses. So it's a nice single point of truth there as well. Um, Queensland also has the Department of Employment, Small Business and Training uh, sector. And in there, there, that covers, as it says in the title, small business. Um, and that will also run you through any specific um, small business supports as well um, as local supports on the ground available in your region. Uh, Queensland also does have a um, grants finder portal as well and I've added that link there too and, and once again you can just provide the information that's relevant to you and it will uh, produce um, some supports that might be available for something that you would be looking, looking to follow up on. Um, and the next one, um, this one is a link to what Lil Zori provided you there but it's the Construction Skills Queensland to find um, a list of courses that you might want to browse through and have a look and see what the options are. Um, the link that I provided there is the one that does take you directly to all of the courses that are on offer. So yes, there is a little eligibility that you need to go through, but I just thought sometimes when you're not exactly sure what you're wanting to look through, this will take you through to um, the full scope of all the courses that are listed um, that attract funding through Construction Skills Queensland. Um, the sorry okay. you're right yep um then there's also to um, tafe queensland subsidized training information so um tafe queensland uh currently with COVID, um does have some uh free uh course options in micro credentials um and also um some skill sets as well that have become available but i've also yet yeah, given you the the subsidized training information there as well which covers the full gamut so even if it was um that there is stuff there that does link to, to CSQ, uh, but there's also, you know, the full variety of funding that's available. So even if it's not relevant for the construction industry and what you're looking for, it may support your families or friends and things like that. So that's a good one to share. Um, the next one here is um, uh, CQU have also got some free, free training options at the moment by COVID effective. So I've added a list there of all of those ones that are available for you under that. Um, and this next one is Queensland Priority Skills List, which does cover um, the subsidised training that's available. Um, it is due for review as we're coming up to end of financial year. Um, this is why I thought that I would provide links so that um, when things do change, you can still, the links will still take you to the most relevant information as we cross over financial years and, um, you know, budgets are revisited and things like that. Um, just in the last week, Shannon Fenderman also released um, Go One Skills Focus Queensland Training Hub, um, and there is some um, free courses available for business as well and um, job seekers through through that one as well. So yeah, today I just wanted to take this opportunity to to share single points of truth and where you can access information. Um, I'm also available to help to navigate the training and funding sector. I can work with uh, businesses or individuals around their needs and um, help to find the best options for you. So thank you for your time today. Um, so Tammy and Lolita, if I am a job seeker and I, I'm actually into the construction sector um, and I go onto your website and get completely lost, what's my first 
thing I should be doing? What, who, who should I be looking at? Who should I be talking to? What should I be looking for? Yeah. I would suggest, yeah, certainly, you know, get in contact with CSQ and we can, and our number would obviously be available there on the website um, to help you navigate through there. It, we, we're constantly refining and making it quite user friendly. Um, there is an area there for those that are seeking, you know, career in the construction industry there to give you different options for various uh, pre employment courses. So that includes our trade start and trade ready programs and if you're a school student as well, we do have some options there as well. So would that advice include um, um, all the various options and, and what they can consider if they don't qualify for certain funding? That's probably covered more through um, my program. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Back to Work program for job seekers has its own portal, so mm -hmm. people can pop online and um, do an application to have a what we call careers training assessment um, session with us. So the person provides us with some basic information. We go through, we um, cross-reference that with uh, their existing Queensland training that they might have done. We then call them up and have a conversation around their individual needs. Um, and then we can work through different eligibilities and what might be available locally and we can help them step them through. Um, you know, it may be getting in contact with Construction Skills Queensland, it may be doing um, a Skill in Queensland for Work program, it may be direct enrolment into a certificate three, it may be a short course option, it may be um, different things. So depending on the individual, we provide tailored advice to that individual um, around um, yeah, which pathways they might like to choose and what funding is available as well. So I'm a small construction business and I am highly excited by the defence contracts that will be coming up. So what should I be looking at? Um, you know, what should, how should I get my workforce ready um, to, you know, so that I am able to take up a, a contract with that to deliver one of those projects? Yep, so they can certainly get in contact with myself as a local engagement manager and I can provide them with some workforce solutions and tools that will help them through that process. And uh, I suppose it just depends the type of business as well that they are, the um, type of work that they're going to carry out and I can you know, provide some assistance whether that be some short course programs to make sure that the, their workforce has the relevant and other current skills to take on those projects um, it, or it could be a high level qualification that they're seeking. There could be also various license outcomes that they might need so again just giving them that support and guidance, guidance as to what training they need mm. to support their, their workforce needs. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Lolita. Do we have any more questions? Please use the, um, the chat space to type your questions. All right, with that, um, yeah, would you like to wrap up the session? Um, the, yeah, no, thank you for the opportunity. We really appreciate you yeah, being able to, um, to, to promote our services and our um, you know, what support that we provide the building and construction industry. I probably should mention as well, we work very closely with major projects in the region. Um, so providing direct funding in to those projects and making sure that there is a skilled and trained up workforce for that particular project as well as any future mm -hmm. projects. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the more we can connect and, and, and help the industry, you know, the better our region and our community will be. So I'm very passionate about that. So thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Lolita. So um, our next webinar, which is scheduled for the 16th of June, specifically uh, covers the areas of you know, recruitment and employment in the construction sector. So we'll be looking at breaking down the types of roles and um, expectations on a, on a job site uh, and, and um, the training and how training prepares uh, uh, somebody or your workforce for to take up the construction work. Um, so we look forward to meeting you all again at our next session. Thank you.